Shiba Inu House, a simple matching game that I picked up on my friendly local game store without really knowing anything about it. I was attracted by the incredibly cute art and this comes from someone who is not a dog person, I'm much more of a, of a cat person. But I was looking for a game that was small, portable, I could play with my daughters during our upcoming trip to Italy. So I thought, well, the art, uh, they're gonna like the art and it does seem to be simple, portable and accessible to their age. You know, I was looking for a game that can be played by a five and a seven year old. And yes, uh, this game works in that setting. It's a simple matching game. In this game, each player has a set, an identical set of cards, and they are they are distinguished by the little symbol. As you can see, different sets have different symbols. So, in Santa, it appears that originally the game was misprinted, and so the game was unplayable. When I bought the game, is was when I bought the game, is was it was in shrink wrap, and on the back the was a plastic envelope tape with some extra cards and I thought like cool mini expansion no I guess that that was simply the, the correct the um, the improved version of the cards but not knowing that I simply shuffled the new cards together with the with the old ones so now I have decks that are larger than were originally intended but they work they allow me to complete all of the challenges in the game uh, I don't know if having some extra cards although some will not work makes the game harder or easier I have no idea so these are cards that are also double-sided each card shows the roof of a dog house with our little cute dog doing something interesting or not but really cute art each each card also includes segments sections of other houses and they all these sections are co uh, coded by color and by symbol each player in the game will have a small deck of cards of challenge cards ranked from one to three they come from a generous deck of cards and the game is pretty simple these cards uh, show one two or three dog houses each player starts by drawing a card, a card from top of the deck, everybody flips their card face up at the same time, and then simply using the cards from your deck you're trying to match the image. So you're going like crazy through your cards trying to see uh, what could be the right card, what could be the right combination of cards to reproduce the dog house that you see there and when you only have one such as in this case it's pretty it's pretty simple uh, ta -da! did it when you have completed the dog house or dog houses on the challenge card then you grab a victory card these cards will be spread out on the table if you're the first player you grab the first one or if you're second player the second one and so on and so forth and then once the round is done everybody has grabbed one the round is over you check to see if the if uh, your combination is correct, if you were able to match the challenge, in which case you get to score your card and you flip it on the other side and that tells you how many points you have. Now it's kind of funny because you see you have victory cards from 1 to 5 and the victory points value is from 1 to 5, you know, first position being 5 points, fifth position being 1 point. I'm not sure why they did that, couldn't they just, uh, you know, print them on only one side and then uh, when you're the first player you grab the highest value that's pretty intuitive that's the number of victory points that you score which happens to be uh, equivalent or oh, what else you grab a card and then if you got it right you get to score it and you keep track of your score using a pretty generous pool of, of victory point tokens now I showed you what happens with only one dog house and that is pretty easy but then you have more interesting challenges with two and the most interesting and challenging of them all are the ones with three. Because sometimes a dog house may have to share a card or you'll, be able, you'll have to share a card between several dog houses to be able to make it. Also this shows how there are two types of houses, some that are made with all the cards vertical 
place sorry placed horizontally and there is this edge the resulting doghouse looks like it has an edge that comes towards um, towards you and then you have several other ones that are made like this this is not correct but that's to show you place in this other way that represent houses that look like they have a flat bottom edge and when, since you may have to use a card to multi you to complete multiple houses it may be that then in your play area they will not be in this order like this one will be here and this one will be to its right and this one will be at the bottom or on top depending on how things will go and this is the game there's a Sashiba Inu house you play a number of rounds so that depends on the number of players and at the point at the end of the game when you reach the end the player with the highest total is the winner of the game very very simple incredibly simple satisfying rewarding yes if you're playing it with a five-year-old and a seven-year-old um, and the five-year-old actually finds the last round or the last sequence the three level cards pretty challenging a little bit of a, of a brain burner nevertheless this still is a game for kids this is not a game that i would play with adults although the level three is pretty challenging well that's they will have to be the ones that face the challenge because even for a simple filler i don't i don't see myself um you know putting this game to the table when we are when we're playing among adults not even as a filler or a warm-up game they're just other activities a little more engaging so uh it's a fun and interesting game for again for families i don't see this and i do not recommend it as a game for adults as a family yes adults with kids or maybe just kids only possibly with an adult supervising um, you know about checking that cheating is not occurring and stuff like that but Generally speaking, it's very cute. It's very, it's very nice uh, for children. It presents them with challenges that feel just right. And if you're playing with very young kids and they find level three challenge too hard, well, just skip it. Give them, let them play a shorter game that only has phases one or phases and phases two change the game around make it instead of like everybody doing their thing you have one single card maybe of level one and all the kids are, are working on the same card at the same time my daughter Luisa who is five really likes cooperative games and actually because of that we tend to come up with cooperative variants for most of the games that we play and this one was one we played it competitively and after a couple of rounds she was like yeah no let's let's do it cooperative i prefer to do it cooperatively um which usually is what she does when she's not winning when she's winning somehow competition seems right and to play this cooperative it was pretty simple we were timing ourselves uh, we were both working on different cards so the idea was the first player to complete their card and can help the other one uh, to finish their their card the challenge and then we see how much time it took us and then we're trying to beat ourselves so, oh, that sounds like that sounds like masochistic beat our records uh, the next time so we're just trying to do it a little faster so that's one trick that we use or you know we, we play games cooperatively we turn competitive into cooperative simply by making games uh, in which you know we need to score more beat our own scores etc etc et et here we're we're fighting we're running against the clock and it works that way incidentally the the box also declares that the game is sort of friendly one to five players that's a little bit of a stretch because it's true you can play just uh, making dog houses but that's really it feels more like like a toy like like a toy feels more like like a play activity than a game if you're playing solitaire the rule book says in one player games players simply practice and exercise the building of the patterns now if a solitaire game is one where you simply practice then i guess all, all the games that i have every single game that i have is solitaire friendly but that is not quite the case however if you follow my suggestion you can play this solitaire you can be played solo but probably uh, with with a timer then you have a parameter that determines how well you did which by the way is to me really what makes the difference between a toy and a play activity in a game proper a game proper is an activity that has rules and also has ways of determining how well you did victory loss or degrees of success generally speaking in uh, however shiba Aino house is a very cute game the art is adorable the game plays well 
for what it is for what it is it's a simple matching game mainly geared towards family and kids and for that target for that specific audience i believe that it is a pretty good game